Hi everyone and happy Wednesday. It's a gorgeous day here in Maine and I thought it would be nice to start this week's video by taking you outside and giving you a little bit of a chance to see some of the beauty that surrounds me and also to hear some of the beautiful sounds I get to hear when I'm out here. This is one of the reasons I love spending lots and lots of time outside. <laughs> Daisies are my absolute favorite flower and I'm so happy to see they are already in bloom here and that they grow wild in my yard. That makes me very, very happy. I also love seeing lady slippers because um, for the longest time I thought they were the provincial flower of New Brunswick, but it turns out they're not. They are the provincial flower of PEI, however. And so they remind me of home and I, I love seeing <laughs> All these pretty flowers just growing in my yard. I didn't have to plant them, they're just coming up and the pollinators are already out and happy and that makes me very happy as well. These are just some of the beautiful sights and sounds I get to be surrounded by and I feel very fortunate to be here. I love taking slow walks around my yard and just observing nature and I find that this is often where I find lots and lots of inspiration. Even though I typically don't really paint flowers a whole lot, they still inspire me because they're so beautiful with their vibrant colors and all the beautiful textures they present. And Garu loves being outside with me too. As I'm sure you know, I also love spending time in my art studio. And for this week's creative project, I have decided to create a textured painting using watercolor, watercolor ground, as you can see. <laughs> I've started applying it with my palette knife. I taped um, some of the sections that I wanted to mask um, so that I could work on creating these raised areas of watercolor ground and uh, I'm not 100% sure yet exactly what I'm going to create. It's going to be an abstract. That's typically how I prefer to work. And I do know that I want to work with some blues and some burnt orange. Um, and of course, you know, metallics are going to make, <laughs> make an appearance. That's just how I roll and how I love to work. Um, but first of all, I wanted to create a few little areas of texture and as I was working, other ideas were coming to mind. And so that's how things usually work out for me. I start with one thing and then as I go along, other ideas come to mind. And I think this is a great way to work because it leaves a lot of room for your imagination to step in and help guide you along the way.
While my watercolor ground is still wet, I've decided to add some of these little mini art stones that I have. I'll um, stick them into the watercolor ground and I think that's going to help to create some really interesting textures that will show up nicely when I add my colors. After adding the mini art stones, I let everything dry and then I was looking at what I had on my paper so far and it started to look a little bit too much like a ladder. <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with ladders per se, but that's not really what I was trying to paint necessarily. <laughs> um, and so I've decided to add a little bit more of the watercolor ground um, to sort of change the composition a tiny bit and I also think I'm going to come in with some stencils when I'm done doing this but before I do that I'll pull out a tool that's probably in everyone's household and that's just a regular fork to create some um, lines in the watercolor ground that I've just added. I think that'll help to create some elements that are interesting and um, yeah this painting is all about texture so I'm playing with different tools that I have I'm adding little elements here and there and my composition is developing as I go along After adding these last few elements with the watercolor ground, I'll be ready to start painting, but first it's important for me to let everything dry completely. I've decided to focus on the use of two colors for my painting, and especially to start off um, because I love how they look together. So the first is this uh, color called Cinquasia Maroon. I hope I pr I'm pronouncing that correctly. It's sort of like a burnt orange. It reminds me a lot of quinacridone burnt orange, in fact. And I really, really love how it looks when it's next to blues. And so I'm going to start by using some turquoise next to it. And um, as I go along, I'll probably darken the colors a little bit but I want to really work with these two colors and see how they blend together and um, I guess the reason I want to use them <laughs> is because this color in particular sort of reminds me of rust and um, I like how that rusty orange looks when it's next to some blue and with all the textures in the painting I think it'll look somewhat like um, an old object that maybe has um, some paint peeling off of it or something. Not exactly like that, but something like that. <laughs> and um, that's sort of the look I'm going for. It's an abstract. It's not exactly, you know, like anything out there. Not anything I've seen anyway. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, but I really just love that blue next to that orange. I think they look so nice together and I'm really looking forward to seeing how this painting is going to develop along the way. White texture over the white paper is really quite bland until you start adding some color over it and then the texture really starts to come up and um, it sort of 
gives a whole new dimension to the painting and that's one of the reasons I love to work with it. I you know used to paint and still paint oh, quite a bit with acrylics and that's one of the things that I love with acrylic paint is how many textures I can create and I love watercolors and I love that you can create texture using salt and all that stuff but I love that tactile element that looks um, like something is three-dimensional that it's coming up raised from the paper and I wasn't really sure how I could ever do that with watercolors until I discovered watercolor ground and since then well I haven't looked back <laughs> I love working with watercolor ground so much um, so and I have a ton of fun when I start adding the color to it because then all those textures that I created in the beginning really start to pop and uh, for me this is a, this is such a fun part of the painting process. Of course watercolors being watercolors they always dry much lighter than they are when you first apply them and um, sometimes that can be a little frustrating but at the same time when you start to get used to working with them and you have an idea how to build your colors then it becomes less tricky and you know what to expect so you know how to work so I always start off with a layer of color that's you know relatively light and I never expect that it will stay exactly as it is as I'm applying it and so I know that when I come back in with my colors again that I can intensify those colors and that's exactly what I'm doing right now I'm basically working with the same color that I worked with before, that Synclasia maroon, uh, that looks a lot like a burnt uh, quinacridone burnt orange. Um, it's a color I really love. So I'm coming over these areas where I had put that paint on previously, and I'm intensifying these areas of color. I'm going to add some more blue, of course, and so as I go along, everything is just going to keep changing. But hopefully, the more color I add and the way I add the colors, I can really continue to make these textures stand out. Because as it is, after that first layer of color dried, it sort of flattened out again and you couldn't really see the textures anymore. So intensifying the colors and making sure that there's a lot of pigment, especially in those areas where there is texture, that as the, the painting process develops, that's going to really help to continue to make those textures stand out. Here I'm adding a color I haven't used in one of my YouTube videos before. It's called and that and anthraquinone very hard to pronounce name anthraquinone blue uh, by M Graham and it's a really beautiful dark color of blue um, that I think is gonna go really well in this painting and I think the reason it'll go really well is because it's gonna stay in those um, depressed parts of the painting in between the textures that were created by the watercolor ground and the mini art stones and the stenciling and whatnot and when I add color over these areas the raised edges will take on new color and then the, the dark color that's you know in the crevices of the watercolor ground and all the textures that are on there I think it's going to help to make those textures those textures stand out so I'm happy to be using it it looks um very bright and beautiful right now which of course I love and I know <laughs> I'm reminding myself that it is going to dry differently and so it's important to you know know <laughs> that it's going to change and that's okay and that's just a part of the whole process of building the colors um, so I'm excited to be using this color and I'm looking forward to seeing how it's going to look with some of the other colors I'm going to add as I go along
Now I'm going to really start to make those textures stand out by using a lighter color on top. And I'm going to be brushing the surface area, holding my brush almost flat against the surface so that I don't get into the crevices in between the textures and I really only um, touch the raised edges as much as possible. This is going to make the textures really stand out so much more and uh, I I really enjoy this part of the process because it's so satisfying when you see that paint coming on and the textures really starting to take form. What I'm doing right now is a technique called, um, or very similar to a technique called dry brushing. It's hard to do dry brushing exactly like you would do it with um, acrylics because acrylics don't dry nearly as fast I find as watercolors. And of course watercolors tend to have a lot of water in them and that doesn't work so well for dry brushing. So what I'm trying to do is have less water in my pigment. I'm trying to come in with my brush, working with it sort of in a flat way, making sure that I'm not getting too much water on the surface of my paper and I'm just trying to gently apply the color. Um, and hopefully as I'm working you can see how it's really um, just covering certain areas of the painting. I'm not trying to cover everything and um, that's important because I want those textures, those textures <laughs> to stand out um, and this is a great way to make that happen. Another way to add um, dimension to certain elements of the painting is to use a darker color to go around the perimeter of certain features and this helps to create sort of like a shadowed effect that helps these elements to stand out. So I'm here just adding uh, some color very quickly and then I'm going to come back in with a wet clean brush and I'm going to try to spread some of that paint a little bit just to let it blend more in the painting.
to create a little bit more of a shaded effect um, on these uh, little rectangular shapes I've created in the middle of my painting. I'm using my black brush pen to add a little bit of ink on the sides and this is going to help to make these elements stand out a little bit more also. I've decided to come in with some Rutile Blue Pearl and I'm going to work on doing a bit of that um, quote unquote dry brushing technique uh, where I sort of use the flat edge of my paintbrush uh, and brush over the surface gently with the color. I think this is going to help to make those textures stand out even more and it'll definitely be really neat to see how the, the raised textures catch the light when the painting is seen from different angles. Now I'm feeling like it's time for Star Gold to make an appearance. <laughs> this is one of my favorite, well, all-time favorite metallic colors. Um, and I wasn't sure if it was the right color of gold, but it's bright, it's beautiful. I want those textures to stand out, and I don't think any other color could do it better than Star Gold. Another metallic color I really like that plays really well with uh, Blue Pearl and Star Gold, as well as the blue and the oranges in this painting, is Magic Green. <laughs> I love Magic Green too, and I think it's just going to help to make those textures stand out even more. Is it absolutely necessary? Maybe not, but <laughs> I felt like adding it, and you know what? Why not? Um, it's all about experimenting and playing and what I do here will certainly help guide my process in other paintings in the future. So 
that this is the time to play and experiment. You know, when you're doing something like this, I'm not overly attached to the painting. I'm trying to experiment and discover things as I'm going along. And I really am trying to work on making these textures pop. And so adding these different metallic colors to the mix, I think is perfect. I've decided to make one final little addition of star gold around the per perimeter of my, what I'm, I guess, considering my focal point in the painting. And then once I'm done adding this, I think I'll be ready to call this painting finished. I've said it before and I'll say it again, I really love playing with texture. And I find that it's a wonderful way to practice developing paint layers. Because as you go along, the textures start to take on a whole new life when your colors start mixing together. Those dark colors at the beginning with the addition of the lighter colors on top and then the metallics really served this painting well to make those textures pop and i am loving how those textures turned out it kind of reminds me of an old metallic pan panel like an old metal panel where maybe the paint is peeling off <laughs> and there's something about that that i find really interesting so it was a fun painting to create and I hope you enjoyed watching this process. Thank you again for making the time to join me on my creative journey. I hope you all have a wonderful week, sweet friends, and don't forget, happy creating!